SCP-001, QNTM's proposal, also known as The Lock. Object Class, Safe. SCP-001 is to be kept locked along with all data pertaining to it inside the primary archival vault on sublevel 1 of Site 10. The vault is a custom manufactured reinforced concrete and steel vertical octagonal prism, see Appendix U for full schematics, with a 2,000 kilogram, 0.9 meter thick, time locked access portal in the ceiling. The time locking schedule should be classified and available only to Dr. Y. Mursky. Access is conditional on three factor authorization keycard, fingerprint, and passphrase. SCP-001 is among the safest artifacts in the Foundation's possession, and these measures are primarily intended to prevent theft. SCP-001 is a smooth, black, perfectly ellip ellipsoidal, 15, approximately 15.1 cm by 15.4 cm by 16.5 cm onyx gemstone with a mottled white pattern. Wrapped around its exterior, encompassing its equator in both poles, is a complex and layered fractal filigree of gold metal. The gold is sculpted into broad strokes at what is now usually agreed to be the lower or south pole of the object, but with increasing latitude, the patterns become progressively more intricate. Near the north pole, also called the lock or singularity, see acquisition report below, the pattern complexity progresses beyond the capability of optical or electron, electron beam microscopes to resolve. Further investigation and pending advances to microscopy technology. The gemstone continuously emits a small quantity, approximately 34.5007 to 34.5010 megawatts of thermal radiation in the microwave range. As a result, the full gold filigree is warm to the touch. The white mottled areas emit fractionally more radiation than the black onyx parts. Other than this, the SCP-001 is totally inert. It is opaque to all forms of electromagnetic and hard radiation, and so far, indestructible. See log for Project Pluto below. Its onyx slash gold composition is guessed from a visual inspection, since the taking of samples for chemical analysis has been proven impossible. Project Pluto Master Log. The following experiments have failed to open SCP-001. Conventional lock picking. Brute force assault with hammer, chisel, sledgehammer, bolt cutters, welding torch, bandsaw, etc. Sustained heating to 5,000 degrees centigrade in industrial furnace artifact reflected all thermal energy, not, did not increase in temperature. Direct application of industrial cutting laser, approximately 160 kilowatts per centimeter squared, concentrated on the lock artifact reflected all energy. Compression is of an advice, car crusher, Hydraulic diamond face, face press, all destroyed. Application of corrosive acids and other highly oxidizing compounds, no, re no reaction. Detonation of plastic and solid explosives up to 0.5 kilotons of TNT equivalent at point blank range, no effect. Detonation of a 15 kiloton TNT equivalent atomic warhead at point blank range, authorization granted retroactively by Dr. Mursky, no effect. And crossed out letters, Project Pluto is to be immediately terminated by Dr. Hack, but Dr. Mursky came in saying, Project Pluto is ongoing with the full support of Foundation resources. The earliest record of SCP-001 is in the handwritten journal of the minor Scottish aristocrat Sir Edwin Young, 3rd Baronet, 1611-1677. As was customary at the time, Young kept the Cabinet of Curiosities, a small room of artifacts of undetermined provenance such as sculptures, Preserved creatures and trinkets. Young's journal include references to his acquisition in 19, sorry, 1654 of any bound jewel of onyx and filigree gold of finels, finels beyond rational statement. While traveling across the Mesopotamian desert, the journal indicates that SCP-001 was found buried in the ruin of a bitter and blasted place older than days, or what Young took to be a temple to a fearsome god, Death God. SCP-001 was found encased in stone at the center of four enormous runic stones. Young's journal includes a sketch of the most readable site, side of the most well-preserved stone, but he was unable to read the runes or find a scholar who could translate them. Young's account of his journey to the location of the ruins is incomplete. It has not yet been located. Young's selections of curious prominence lay in storage for several centuries after he died. 
In 1805, his descendants donated SCP-001 to the Scottish National Museum in Edinburgh. The curators of the museum regarded SCP-001 as an ancient, fragile, and priceless example of ancient Sumerian metalworking. They therefore failed to discover its anomalous warmth, its indestructibility, or its impossible microscopic scale con and construction. They were, however, able to identify the runes and young sketches care to read Sumerian cuneiform circa 3400 BC. Only a partial translation is possible. With loss and question mark, we slash I question mark, a noun, a pact, probably a proper noun, on this ending slash finality, question mark, joy plus permanence, possibly quote unquote protection. Mr. McCandlish, who performed the translation, noted, this appears to be some sort of incantation or spell of containment. A pact is the name of whatever is imprisoned within a gemstone. SCP-001 is finally placed on semi-permanent display in 1949. In 2003, Foundation staff observed that the mottled white patterns on the surface of SCP-001 resembled the cosmic microwave background, a pattern of microwaves encompassing the entire observable universe. As mapped by NASA Wilkinson Microwave Anastropy Probe earlier that year, Closer inspection showed the two patterns to be identical. SCP-001, along with Baronet's Young's Journal, was immediately purchased by a Foundation Front organization and transferred to Site 10, where Dr. Q. Hack and Dr. Y. Mirsky performed initial routine analysis. Research continues under the auspices of Dr. Mirsky, having Dr. Hack having recently left the Foundation. Young's Journal also includes several detailed sketches of SCP-001. In one of the sketches, a small ornate object resembling a key is shown fitted into the North Pole. The key has not been recovered.